Hi and welcome back to Free Do Hub today in our course on Enterprise Network Security. Um, we'll be working on setting up uh, WASA. Now, if you have been following, um, we covered segmentation in our last lab. Um, today, our main goal is to install WASA on Ubuntu operating system. Um, in this lab, we'll install and configure WASA, which is an open source SIEM, which is security information and event management solution for advanced log management, monitoring, and security analysis. So if you remember, we had syslog before. We decommissioned it in our segmentation lab. But in today's lab, we'll use our WASA server for um, collection of logs and all the details from different servers. So we'll be installing WASA. Um, there would be an IP address of 172.16.200.10 on our WASA server, which is over here. Now, then we'll deploy a WASA agent on Web01, which is a Windows computer. And then we'll validate the security event logging by simulating an SSH attack. Further, we'll explore the WASA log storage and agent configuration. Now, um, as you can see that I'm logged in as a root user on my uh, Ubuntu operating system. Um, since the uh, uh, installation of WASA requires admin privileges in order to install lots of things and uh, um, I don't want to take any sort of risk or doubts in the installation of it. You can create a WASA admin account and uh, add it to the uh, sudo user or the sudo user's account. Um, you can use that one and then uh, we configured the IP address on this one using NetPlan and this is the IP address of our system. Just make sure that it's up and uh, the default gateway for us is 172.16.200.2 and then we have 172.16.200.2 again as the name server. So that's the configuration for it. Now, since we configured SSH, it's more user friendly if you're using it through a Windows based system. So I would prefer um, installing WASA on this server. Um, using a Windows based system, we'll uh, use SSH in order to connect to our WASA server. So as you can see, I'm on my Windows server and I would like to SSH uh, the um, server on which we'll be installing WASA. So um, I'll SSH, I'll enter the name of the user followed by the IP address of that one, press enter. It would ask you for the username and password. Provide the password on this one. And uh, as you can see, now I'm connected to WASA. And uh, I want to log in as a root user. So I'll enter sudo su. And now, as you can see, I'm connected as a root user. I'll clear the screen so that now we'll start the installation of WASA. Now, before I'll start the installation, um, let me tell you that I'm installing version 4.7. Um, I tried installing it on my system uh, for latest version, which is 4.10. Uh, but since uh, this is an older version of Ubuntu, uh, maybe due to some dependencies and stuff, I wasn't able to install. So we'll be going through 4.7. Um, before installing it, I updated and upgraded my Ubuntu. Second thing is I installed JDK on my Linux system. Curl should be there by default. If you don't have it, please install it. And then I'll type in um, curl minus S O it's not zero. So just make sure that it's O followed by the address office 4.7. If you want to install version 4.10, you can just change it to 4.10 over there. And then um, I'm just using a two in the same um, command over here. And then I'll just press enter. Now it would start the installation of it. Uh, it found the latest release of it as 4.70, uh, 4.75, and it would continue the installation process. Uh, just wait for five or six minutes, but make sure that as soon as the installation would end, it would display username and password on screen. Uh, now, the reason why we are using SSH to connect to our WASA server is so that we can comfortably copy the username and password because it's going to appear only once. And if you'll not note it down, um, it would be very difficult to get it again. Um, it's a lengthy password, so typing it again uh, would be a bit difficult. So I would highly recommend to connect it using an SSH and then 
uh, copy the password once it's there. Um, so let's give it some time. I'll show you once it's installed and we'll continue from there. Now, as you can see that it has successfully completed the installation of it and you can see the admin username and password. So just make sure that you have copied the username and password from here. Next thing is that we want to change the password on our Waza. Um, before that, just make sure that you take a snapshot of your server because if uh, these commands would not work, maybe you'll have to install your Waza in, um, um, again on the same server. So for changing the password, I'm again using a curl command. So minus SO was a password tool. And then I'm going to packages and make sure you're using the same package um, which you use for the installation. So since we installed 4.7, I'll enter 4.7 here as well. Press enter, it won't display anything. And now we'll change the password. So in order to change the password, I'm pass a bash command over here, was a password tool.sh minus u admin is the admin and p is your password so you'll change the password over here so whatever password you'll like to change it would just display it after that it would generate a hash of it and your password would be changed so once the installation is complete we'll go to our waza server and just make sure that uh, you'll reload the daemon make sure that you enable waza manager and then start your waza manager so now in order to check the connectivity, we'll go to our management 01 and just make sure that you are entering HTTPS 172.16.200.10, which is the IP address of our Waza server. Then go to advanced and try to access the server. Now, as you can see that it's loading it, it would take some time. And then we'll enter the username and password. Uh, just make sure that you are entering the new password that you have just changed. So our username would be admin and we'll enter the password over here and press login so that's the default interface of it now at the moment since um, it's a fresh installation and we don't have any agents installed so that's why active agents are appearing as zero and total agents are also appearing as zero so we need to install an agent on our web zero one now, first of all, we'll have to create some groups over here so that we can segregate the Linux servers and Windows servers. So in order to do that, we'll click on this was a thing. Then we'll go to management and we'll add groups. And let's try to add a group over here by clicking here. And uh, we'll name it as um, Linux servers and uh, we can create another group for Windows as well. And then just create, okay. So you'll have two groups over here, Linux and Windows. Um, the next thing is that since we want to have an agent, so you can click on active agents and uh, then you'll have to select the operating system for which you want to install um, the agent. So I'm selecting Linux over here. Um, since I'll be installing on CentOS, so the server address here would be the server address of this one, which would be 172.16.200.10. Uh, and then um, for the assign an agent name, you can call it as web01, since we are installing it for web01. <laughs> and if you want to add it to an existing group, you'll click over here and click on Linux so that it would appear on these respective group. So further down here, you can see the command which is there in order to install the agent on our web01. So uh, we'll have to copy this command from here and install it on our web01. Further, if you'll scroll down, they are saying the same thing that after the installation of agent, you'll have to run the same commands again, which we recently did, just to make sure that the agent starts reporting to Waza. So since we want to install it on our web server, so let's SSH from here to our web server. So provide the IP address and the name, and then press continue or type in yes and provide 
the password over there. Now, as you can see that I am connected to Web01 and we'll paste the command that we have just copied and press enter. So once the installation would finish, you'll pass in a command sudo systemctl enable waza agent and then start waza agent. Once that's done, if you'll come to your dashboard on your waza, you can see that it has detected that there is one active agent and web01 is appearing here now. Further, if you look into the details, we have the IP address of our Web01, which is a, in the Linux group, and we can even see the operating system and other details of it. Now we want to validate security event logging by simulating a failed SSH login. So we'll go to the terminal again, and uh, we'll exit from here. And we'll try to connect to Web01 with a fake account. And then we'll check that if it's catching the failed SSH login attempts or not. Now, as you can see that I have tried it three different times to enter a wrong password in order to log into our Web01. So now if we want to see that if our WASA agent captured the unsuccessful login attempts to our Web01, we'll click on the agents over here so we can see our uh, Linux server up here. Uh, so if I'll click on that one, it would open the details for that. And if you would like to see that how many times someone tried to log into the system um, with the wrong uh, password and stuff, click on security events. And you'll be able to see over here that it is telling you that authentication failure six times were there where someone tried to log into the server with the wrong password. And if you'll click on it and scroll down, you'll be able to see the details over here. And if you want to see more details on it, you can just click on it and it would tell you all the uh, relevant details of it that um, how it was tried, from which IP addresses, failures, and rest of the other things. So that was a short tutorial on how can we install and configure Waza by installing agents and to look at different security events. That's it for today. Thank you very much.